right guys, KI Coaster Guys Major Coasters at Kings Island ranked. No kiddie coasters here folks, just the big boys. Here we go. Starting off at number 11, we have Kings Island's Aero Mine Train Adventure Express. This is one of the very first coasters I ever rode, and it absolutely has an important place in Kings Island's lineup, in my opinion. If someone were to ask me what the best coaster at this park to start with is for someone who's a little nervous about them, this would be my pick. Yeah, even before Woodstock Express. It's the perfect starter coaster for anyone who isn't quite comfortable yet because its layout is extremely tame. It doesn't go upside down. It's not real fast. It's not real high up. It also doesn't really have any airtime. Unfortunately, those things are also its biggest downside for a coaster enthusiast. Anytime I ride Adventure Express, I always feel as if I'm waiting for a drop that's gonna come at some point, but it never does. On the brighter side, it's easily the most relaxing roller coaster in the park. So it's definitely a good ride to hop on if you need a bit of downtime from some of the bigger rides. And while Adventure Express, and I expect most other Aero Mine trains, even though I haven't been on all of them, have very little to offer for someone like me, at least in terms of thrills, I still enjoy a ride on this from time to time anyway. And I'm definitely looking forward to riding this with my son when he's tall enough to get on it, hopefully next spring. All right, coming in at number 10, and there may be some of you mad at me already here, is Vortex. Back in the late 1990s, Vortex, along with The Beast and Flight of Fear, were where I earned my coaster stripes. I'm not sure if I ever really appreciated those coasters back then, but stepping off Vortex for the first time felt like conquering a fear I had struggled with every trip I had taken to Kings Island for years. And after a time, this definitely became a must ride for me. Today, I feel like this is one of, if not the most, hit or miss ride in the park. I enjoyed it the couple of times I rode it last season, but in the first or second weekend of May 2019, I had a terrible ride on it that had me convinced I would never ride it again. The ride was running so slow that I began to wonder if it could even finish the circuit. It felt creaky and bumpy, and the inversions were extremely uncomfortable. Then, just last month, I decided to give it another shot and actually really enjoyed it. The ride felt much better than it had just a month before. It just feels really inconsistent. I will say, there is a certain hang time experience you get from older coasters like Vortex that you really won't get from some of the newer coasters, and that's something I can really appreciate. I'm not one of those people that really want to see it torn down, and I'll be sad when that happens, but at the same time, I really don't think Vortex is in the same kind of untouchable class as something like The Beast or The Racer. In fact, I fully expect that at some point, probably in the not too distant future, Kings Island will announce that Vortex will be coming down at the end of a season. But until that happens, this will be a coaster I make a point of getting on at least a couple of times a year. Moving on to number nine, we have Invertigo. And despite the fact I've been to the park countless times since the 1999 season, I never managed to get a ride on Invertigo until 20 years later, just a few weeks ago. When it was new, I was terrified of it. And until recently, it was because I never wanted to wait in the terribly slow line to get a ride. I just wasn't that interested. I kept telling myself I'd get on it next time. With all the hate this coaster gets, I really wasn't even looking forward to riding it. I just hopped on because the line was short and it bugged me that there was a coaster at Kings Island I hadn't been on. Once I got on it though, I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I was really taken aback with how forceful those inversions feel. And it's nice to have a coaster that goes backwards at Kings Island since they got rid of Backwards Racer ages ago. While it's definitely not one of my top coasters in the park, I really do think it's better than most KI fans say. Even if it is just a cookie cutter boomerang that only runs one train and has super slow dispatch times. And at number eight, we have a true classic and a Kings Island staple in The Racer. Another one of my very firsts and a very fun classic wooden coaster. Recently, the blue car side was retracted in some areas, I believe by GCI. And though I've only been on the blue car side once so far this season, I rode red immediately after and could absolutely feel a very noticeable difference between the two. The red side is a bit too rough for my taste and it needs some work in my opinion. Also, I'm a bit confused by the fact that at least 
least during the early days of the season when Racer was only operating one train a lot of the time, it tended to be the red one, which was really pretty disappointing. It would have made much more sense to me if they had opened just the blue instead, since they've just done work on it and it's running much better than the red. Either way though, I still get a kick out of this classic wooden coaster. It has a pretty fun first drop and then just airtime hill after airtime hill. Unfortunately, due to the fact that I generally tend to go to Kings Island only during the week to avoid crowds, I don't get that many rides on it where the coaster is actually dueling. I should probably make a point of actually racing on the racer more often. Prior to my enthusiast days, this is probably the coaster I had been on more times than any other. I love it. Since racer is often a pretty short wait, it's usually a no-brainer to just make a quick stop and grab a ride before continuing on through the rest of Coney Mall. And while I don't make it a point to ride this coaster every single time I go to the park, if you're someone who only gets the chance to go to Kings Island once or twice a year, I would suggest that you do. Some coasters age like a fine wine, while others age like a shag carpet. While I'd say Vortex falls somewhere near the middle of those two extremes, our next coaster is definitely in the former category. At number seven, we have The Bat, or Top Gun, as it was called back in my day. Today, this is often a walk-on and some who either weren't around back in the 90s or didn't visit the park during that time might feel a bit confused and wonder why this coaster has such a ridiculously long queue. As hard as this might be to believe though, during the PKI days, it wasn't at all uncommon to see that filled completely. We're talking a ride wait time that was really only rivaled by the Beast and Vortex. These days, it's not quite as popular. I think at least partly because it's so far back and the walk to the station takes a bit. But this is still a great ride. While a little on the shorter side, you're often able to just get back on with very minimal, if any, weight. I highly suggest a front row ride if you've never tried it. It's worth it to wait an extra cycle or two for that. It's not the most thrilling coaster around, but with suspended coasters like this being so rare these days, I really hope the bat sticks around for a long while. The way that a suspended coaster swings back and forth with the momentum is a really unique experience, and I'm really happy to have one at my home park. At number six, we have bear with me here, Backlot Stunt Coaster. Now I know there are probably some of you out there that are really not too happy seeing this coaster make it so high up on this list. The thing is, I've always really enjoyed this one, and I'm not sure I really understand the hate it gets. I do have a theory though. I think it has to do with where the coaster is located in the park. In the 2004 season, Paramount's Kings Island removed the iconic Lay Taxi Auto Ride, and this coaster, then called Italian Job Stunt Coaster, is what took its place. Another factor is that during those days, enthusiasts really wanted to see more thrill coasters put into the park, like Cedar Point and other parks were getting. And with only a couple exceptions, PKI didn't really provide that to the kind of standards that Cedar Fair is doing anyway. In any case, I don't really think this coaster gets treated fairly. This ride is a lot more fun than you think it's going to be when you're waiting in line to ride it for the first time. It's a whole lot faster, or at least it feels faster, and more forceful than you'd normally expect from something like this. In my opinion, it's the best family coaster in the park. Probably one of the best family coasters I've ever been on, and I have a good time each and every time I ride it. So bring on the pitchforks. All right, just making the top five is Flight of Fear. Nobody really talks about this ride much anymore, but back in the late 90s, this thing was a pretty huge deal for Kings Island and Kings Dominion, which also has an exact clone. Sure, it's still pretty cool today, but it's hard for me to overstate how impressive and intimidating this coaster was, at least to me, back when it was brand new. With the exception of Tomb Raider, I'd say this was easily the most heavily themed attraction Paramount built during its time running the park. And man, oh man, did it stand out. The very first time I saw this thing, I had no no idea what to expect. I was truly going in blind. Coming up on that Area 51-like hangar, and then you make it into the main part of the queue with the flying saucer and cheesy video that explains what's going on was just pretty mind-blowing for a park like Kings Island back in 1996. But the part that made the biggest impact for me, it was when you made it into the loading station and saw the coaster launch. As far as I knew at the time, roller coasters were just basically chains that pulled a train up a big hill slowly and then let it roll down the other side. Not Flight of Fear, 
The launch might not be all that impressive today at 0 to 54 in 4 seconds, but visually to me as a kid, that looked like a bullet being launched from a gun. The first time I saw Flight of Fear's launch was the biggest hell no moment I have ever had on a coaster. And I didn't even ride it, I just booked it out of there. Give me a break though, I was like 11 at the time. This ride is still pretty fun. And like Vortex, I do feel like there's something about the way the inversions feel that you don't get today on newer coasters. And like I said, I really appreciate that. Mostly though, Flight of Fear is all about the launch. It does tend to get a decently long line sometimes. So it's not something I ride every time I come to the park, but I do take advantage of good opportunities to get on this one when the park is a bit slow. At number four, we have The Beast. Now, what can I say about The Beast that hasn't already been said? This is the most iconic roller coaster at Kings Island. It gives a legendary night ride and is one of the most historically significant coasters ever built. That first drop is still pretty great. And going out into the woods on a roller coaster and the isolated feeling it has compared to the rest of the rides at the park makes it such a unique experience. This coaster kept up its top spot in the park well into the late 90s and early 2000s and is still solidly in the top five during its 40th anniversary season. All that being said, this is the only ride in the park that I still get nervous before riding because if conditions aren't right, this ride can be extremely uncomfortable. Even under the best of circumstances, that helix at the end is pretty rough, but I took a ride on this thing a few weeks ago after it had been raining and it was extremely uncomfortable and ended, I ended up with a headache that stayed with me the rest of the night. I heard some people say the ride is just as smooth now or smoother even than it's ever been, but I know a lot of people that agree with me that the ride has gotten rougher over the years and could maybe use a retrack or at least some track work. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old. Either way, just know that this coaster isn't necessarily for everyone. When I go to the park with my wife, we avoid this one at all costs because it's been a day ender for her every single time. Most of the time though, I do enjoy the beast quite a bit. I could just be a little too harsh at this point because of that last really rough ride I took, but either way, the beast is solidly in the top five at KI for me. Congratulations beast on making it to your 40th anniversary. Here's to another 40. All right, we're into the top three now, guys. Coming in third is gonna be Kings Island's newest coaster as of the 2019 season, Mystic Timbers. Coming off of this thing for the first time last season, I really enjoyed it, but I also felt like you spent way too much time on the brake run. But this is a coaster that the more I ride it, the more I like it. I really enjoy the way the train speeds up a bit at the top of the lift hill and sends you surging down that bank drop. And from then on, it's just one element after another, tossing you around back and forth. It really feels like a runaway minecart. This coaster feels fast. One of the things that really surprised me after I rode it for the first time was looking up the stats and seeing the speed listed at only 48 miles per hour. It absolutely feels a lot faster than that to me at least. Another thing I do want to mention is the theming. Some parts of the theming work better than others, but mostly I'm just really happy to see Cedar Fair taking this aspect of their attractions more seriously, and I sincerely hope that that trend continues. Enthusiasts and Kings Island fans may have been a bit disappointed when Mystic Timbers was unveiled, but these days, I think most would agree this has been a fantastic addition to the park. Some may not be pleased seeing it ranked above the beast on this list, but I really do think Mystic Timbers is the better coaster. Though maybe you agree, since I've noticed that sentiment is becoming more and more common these days. All right, at number two, we have Banshee. As someone who went from being afraid of roller coasters as a kid to enjoying them, but still feeling kind of uneasy on them as a teenager to not really riding many coasters for a long time as an adult, Banshee was a revelation to me. Having not been to any parks, including KI for a number of years, the first time I decided to get on this ride, I felt really intimidated just looking at it. But the restraints made me feel so comfortable and secure that immediately after the train disengaged from the lift hill, I was laughing, smiling, and had become a coaster enthusiast right then and there. 
I know a lot of people complain about Banshee's restraints, but I like them. I love this coaster. It's fast, intense, and to me just feels like you're flying. This is a must ride for me every time I go to the park, and usually I get on it more than once. And that brings us to our top spot, and I'm sure you already guessed that it's Diamondback. Listen, there are a lot of people out there that wouldn't agree with this as the number one pick, and I get that. A lot of enthusiasts prefer the ejector airtime of Mystic Timbers, or the intensity and inversions of Banshee. And I'm sure there are some of you that think the Beast is the number one coaster, or at least in the top three. But for me, there's just nothing else in the park like Diamondback. I love a good first drop, and for my money, there isn't a better one at KI. The floater airtime on this ride is great, and I just love it. When I go to Kings Island and don't get a chance to ride Diamondback because either it's down or the line is too long and I don't want to wait for an hour, I turn into one of those people from those Snickers commercials. It's really not good. I'm not me when I'm hungry for Diamondback. Don't get me wrong, I really love all the coasters I put in the top three. Some days I like Mystic Timbers better, other days I like Banshee better. I think you could make a great argument for any of those coasters being number one, uh, but for me, it's Diamondback. All right, guys, so that's it. My ranking of all the major coasters at Kings Island. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm crazy? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe for more and hit the notifications if you haven't already. Thanks, guys, and I'll talk to you next time.